It was in the clove of seasons. Summer was dead, but autumn had not yet been born. That the ibis lit in the bleeding tree. The flower garden was stained with rotting brown magnolia petals, and iron weeds grew rank amid the purple phlox. The five o'clocks by the chimney still marked time, but the oriole nest in the elm was untenanted and rocked back and forth like an empty cradle. The last graveyard flowers were blooming, and their small drifted across the cotton field and every room of the house, speaking softly the names of the are dead. It's strange that all this is still so clear to me, now that the summer has long since fled and time has had its way. A grindstone stands where the bleeding tree stood, just outside the kitchen door, and now if an oriole sings in the elm, its so song seems to die up in the leaves, a silvery dust. The flower garden is prim, the house a gleaming white, and the pale fence across the yard stands straight and spruce. But sometimes, like right now, as I sit in the cool, green-draped parlor, the grindstone begins to turn, and time, with all its changes, is ground away, and I remember Doodle. Doodle was just about the craziest brother a boy ever had. Of course he wasn't a crazy crazy, was, but was a nice crazy. He was born when I was six, and was from the outset a disappointment. He seemed all head with a tiny body, which was red and shriveled like an old man's. Everybody thought he was going to die. Everybody except Aunt Nicey, who had delivered him. When he was two, if you laid him on his stomach, he began to try to move himself, straining terribly. The doctor said that with his weak heart, this strain would probably kill him, but it didn't. Trembling, he pushed himself up, turning first red, then a soft purple, and finally collapsed back onto the bed like an old, worn-out doll. I can still see Mama watching him, her hand pressed tight across her mouth, her eyes wide and unblinking, but he learned to crawl. Once he learned to crawl, we brought him out of the front bedroom, putting him on the rug before the fireplace. For the first time, he became one of us. Although Doodle learned to crawl, he showed no signs of walking, but he wasn't idle. He talked so much that we all quit listening to what he said. It was about this time that Daddy built him a go-kart and I had to pull him around. At first I just paraded him up and down the piazza, but then he started crying to be taken out into the yard, and it ended up by my having to lug him wherever I went. If I so much as picked up my cap, he'd start crying to go with me, and Mama would call from wherever she was, Take Doodle with you! To discourage his coming with me, I'd run with him across the ends of the cotton rows and careen him around, corners on two wheels. Sometimes I accidentally turned him over, but he never told Mom. <sighs> Finally, I could see I was licked. Doodle was my brother, and he was going to cling to me forever, no matter what I did. So I dragged him across the burning, across the burning cotton field to share with him the only beauty I knew, Old Woman Swamp. Then he began to cry. For heaven's sake, what's the matter, I asked, annoyed. It's so pretty, he said. So pretty, pretty, pretty. Here we are, Doodle. Old woman's fun. <laughs> For heaven's sake, Doodle, what's the matter? It, it's so... It's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Doodle was five years old, I was embarrassed at having a brother of that age who couldn't walk. So I set out to teach him. We were down an old woman's swamp, and it was spring, and the sweet, sick sweet smell of bay flowers hung everywhere like a mournful song. Come on, Doodle, I'm gonna teach you to walk. Why? I'm sick of lugging you around in that go-kart all the time. But I can't. Says who? The doctor? Mama? Everybody. Come on, Doodle. I'm going to teach you how to walk. But you're going to hurt me. I won't hurt you. I'm going to teach you how to walk. Come on. Get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Come on. One more time. You can walk. Come on, brother. You can walk. Come on. Get up. Come on, Doodle. I know you can do it. Come on. Come on. Get up. Oh, come on, brother. Stop come it. Come on, get off. You can walk. You know you can. <laughs> Cut. 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 At breakfast on our chosen day, when Mama, Daddy, and Aunt Nicey were in the dining room, I brought Doodle to the door in the go-kart, as usual, and had them turn their backs, making them cross their hearts and hope to die if they peeked. I helped Doodle up... <clears throat> Everybody, look what I just saw, Doodle. Oh my God, Doodle! Oh, Doodle! You're so amazing, man. 
Love you. Daddy, Mama, Doodle, and I were seated at the dining room table having lunch. It was a hot day with all the windows and doors open in case a breeze should come. It's so calm today. I wouldn't be surprised if we were storm this afternoon. I haven't heard the rain, Frog. I did. Oh, you did. Oh, you did, eh? I certainly did. <laughs> What's that? It's coming from the south. <laughs> It's a great big red bird! It's not even afraid of us! It may be tired or sick. What is it? Oh, uh, go get me the book. Alright, alright. It's sick! I think it's sick. There you go. What is it? Oh, let's see here. It's a scarlet ibis, normally found in the tropics. Mostly got brought up by a tropical storm. I feel bad for it. Let's go for the Okay. I'm not hungry. Don't touch it. Anymore. I think I, I think I'm gonna bury it. Alright, Doodle. Such a beautiful bird. Brother!